Here we have a project that does something that is very common when you're converting between Python and Rust, which is you have a particular data type and you want to convert it into a Python data structure. So how do we do this? First up here, you can see that the lib is the location where all the code is. So inside of source, lib.rs, inside of a directory called data-conversion, I've got a import here that says use pyo3, and there's some libraries that are imported, including the Python dictionary. Next up, what we do is we have a Python function here, which is going to do the heavy lifting, and we say function data types example pi, and then we have a pi results object right here, and then we define our Rust types here. So we say text, and this is a string. We have integer, this is i32. We have floating, f64, and we have bool. Now what we do is we create a Python dictionary. So again, this is a traditional Python dictionary people are used to, but we're doing it from inside of Rust, and we're using let here. And then what we do next is we say Python dict dot set item, and we actually go through here and insert a key value pair one by one. So we say set the integer to integer, the floating to floating, the Boolean to Boolean, and then finally we go through and return that Python dictionary. Now, in order to use it as a Rust module, all we need to do here is say uh, pi module and say fn lib data conversion, pass that inside of here and return back a pi result. And this is the magic part right here, which is that data types example function with the input again right here. This is actually being called down below. Now, if we go over to a make file, which I think is a great way to build things, we have a cargo build release, and then I copy the .so file into the current working directory. So let's go ahead and run that. If I type in make build, there we go. Pretty easy. We're able to actually get this thing working. And if I look inside as well, we should see an .so file. And there we do see this. Uh, so file. Now all I need to do is go to Python and actually build a little bit of code. In this case, I just import the name of that .so file without, of course, the .so, and then I call the function that's associated. So again, the function is what lives right here. This is the function that we're exposing. And then if I go back here and I say print data type, we should get something like this. So all I need to do, because I've already made this executable, is type in convert. And here we go. We're able to convert the uh, Rust data types into Python and then print that out. So you can see here it's pretty straightforward to actually you know, take something that is originating from Rust. Let's say you're doing a bunch of fancy computationally expensive operations. Uh, put those into this PyO3 system. Go ahead and create a .so file. Put that so file in your directory, go ahead and call it from inside of a Python script, and you're ready to go.